education will be given by Father James Peavy House of St. Mark's Episcopal Church. Everyone, if you'd please silence your cell phones, and if you so choose, please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Almighty God, you delight in your creation and will call us to account for our stewardship of all your good gifts. Guide our mayor and city council members as they gather for their work of administration. As they lead together, where there is confusion, grant them clarity. Where there is fear, grant them courage. Where there is anxiety, grant them peace. Strengthen them this day and in the days to come and increase in all of us the vision and desire to help make our city of Beaumont a place of kindness and justice for all. And may all our work be to your greater glory. Amen. Amen. City Clerk, could we have the roll call, please? Yes. Mayor West? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Durio? Present. Councilmember Getz? Present. Councilmember Turner? Here. Councilmember Felshaw? Present. Councilmember Samuel? Present. And Councilmember Neal? Present. Thank you. Okay, today we have two proclamations. First, we have a proclamation recognizing Men's Health Month, and accepting will be Regina Rogers or Norma Sampson, and crew, uh, y'all are all welcome, Executive Director, Executive Director of Gift of Life. No, not yet, not yet. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I jumped ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas on June 23rd a nas uh, is National Men's Health Month. Oh, I'm sorry, am I reading? Yeah, I'm reading the right one. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Whereas June 23rd is National Men's Health Month, and whereas prostate cancer is the most frequently diagnosed cancer in men aside from skin cancer, and about one in eight men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer during their lifetime. And whereas Texas is a medically uninsured capital of the United States with 5.2 million Texans without coverage. And whereas in 2023, it is estimated that 17,230 men in Texas will be diagnosed with prostate cancer and approximately 2,290 will die from the disease. And whereas Gift of Life, in collaboration with its medical partners, makes available men's free health care services, including prostate-specific antigen, PSA screenings, primary care tests, HIV, and hepatitis C tests, along with on-site physician consultations to review test outcomes and navigate men to care. Whereas Gift of Life will host regional men's health screening events and educational outreach presentations throughout the month of June and July. Whereas since 2000, more than 10,990 Southeast Texas men have received Gift of Life free prostate cancer screenings, helping to extend the lives of 77 men who were diagnosed with cancer and who were provided access to diagnostic evaluations and treatment. Now, therefore, I, Roy West, Mayor of the City of Beaumont, do hereby proclaim June 2023 as Men's Health Month in the City of Beaumont and Tuesday, June 6, as Gift of Life Men's Health Awareness Day in Beaumont. And, I, and he also urges all men in our community to pursue prevention health practices and early detection efforts. In witness there, where, whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the office of mayor of the city of Beaumont, Texas to be affixed this sixth day of June. Accordingly, the mayor has hereunto set his hand and caused the seal of the city of Beaumont to be affixed. Signed, Roy West, June 6, 2023. And as the mayor stated, um, I think it's uh, Regina Rogers and Norma I'm Sampson. Sam. And anyone else that wants to join, if you'll come up, receive your proclamation, shake everyone's hands, and have a few words at the podium.
I hope that didn't take up all of our time to make comments. There was a lot of hugging and kissing. So uh, on behalf of the Gift of Life, I'm Norma Sampson. Regina Rogers, as you know, is the founder and chair. And I have our wonderful blue crew with me, which is comprised of our officers of Gift of Life, uh, interim president Linda Domino with her wonderful, amazing husband, Joe Domino. As many of you know him, he's been a, a legend in terms of Southeast Texas of his impact. I have Marty Craig, one of our officers with us as well as our staff, Holly Peterson, our new and much appreciated medical director, Gwendolyn Lavalle, and two fabulous Mac men. That's our Men Against Cancer support group. Many of you probably know and have seen MacArthur English with us and George Humphrey, who have been incredible supportive. And also just back from LA as our Lynx president for the area, our program strategic manager, Ingrid Holmes, is with us as well. So I I am, oh, and how could I forget our chief? You know what? He said he was working today and he couldn't wear a shirt, so I forgot that. And anyway, so Chief Earl White, who uh, maybe if you recall, he is a prostate cancer survivor. He was one of our honorary chairs as well and knows how important it is to be a man and get checked. And that's what the message is about today. You all have a T-shirt, and we're asking you to please help us get these Beaumont men, women, we know we have to do it, to get them to register for the free screenings that you just talked about in the proclamation. Gift of Life is making these empowering screenings that have a value of nearly $500. It's free. It's a PSA. It's primary care. It's screenings that often many of us just don't go take advantage of. You can't leave work, and there's other problems that keep you from going to health care. But Gift of Life, with our amazing supporters, which is on the back of our t-shirt, that's our collaborative partnership. It's caring, compassionate physicians and healthcare providers throughout Southeast Texas that joined with us because they know how important it is to get our men to take care of themselves. And they're one of the groups that generally don't access health care. So with your help, we're hopeful. And with everyone here, our wonderful veterans, I see them in the back and Joni and everyone supports our cause. And just as a little bit sidebar, our screenings are for medically underserved men. And that means you perhaps know many men who have health insurance still can't afford to access care. They're high deductibles or they simply aren't provided. They're not accepted in the provider network. We have these screenings for our veterans. We encourage them and work with them. We know you have health care, but often it's difficult to get to that and have appointment times. So we lovingly and compassionately extend these services to men throughout Southeast Texas. We were in Port Arthur last week. We're going to be in Orange this Saturday, and then we're going to wait and let you guys celebrate Father's Day. And then we're going to be in Beaumont at the Julian Ben Rogers Cancer Center. We've got t-shirts, lunches, loving, compassionate people People that are there that will walk our men through these health care services. It's incredible. There are physicians that are on site through the Beaumont Baptist Residency. They're there to answer any of the questions and go over the point of care. Dr. Gwendolyn Lavalle is there. So if someone has a point of care test that is needing them to get additional services with Gift of Life, 
She is there navigating them. So may I, do we have a few minutes that I can ask some of our members to make a Plus a $25 gift certificate to Jason Stelly for every gentleman who is green. Thanks to the wonderful Tatoris family, and they've been extremely supportive of our efforts, Joe, for many years before he passed away and now in absentia and memoriam, and we're very, very grateful. So the men are very excited about that as well. And thank you, Regina, because, it you know, we know we always like to have a little added boost to make people feel incentivized to come. They get these T-shirts and a lot of, lot of extra educational outreach because prevention is key in terms of all of us having a healthy life. Do we have just a moment? I could ask Dr. Lavalle and our two Mac men to give a couple of comments. Sure. Thank yes. you, Dr. Lavalle. Well, good afternoon. But in uh, keeping in time with everything, I'd just like to say, you know, the statistics that were read during the proclamation are just point on. And it is so important for all those people who don't have access to care to have a revenue for assistance. And we've got it. We just need you guys to get the word out to let everybody know that if you need or even if you just don't know what your risk factors are and what kind of health you have, you need to get them out there so they can come and see us. We'll be so happy they did. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Lovely. And could I have our MAC men, which is also inclusive of Chief White, make a comment in terms of, you understand the importance of these services. Uh, Chief, could I ask you and Mac Arthur and George to come forward? That's okay. Go ahead. He can go ahead. Good evening. I'm MAC English, one of the MAC men here. But now everything is said, now all we need is men to go and come and get checked. Now, we have a program set up every second Tuesday of each month. We have someone from the medical field, and we have a luncheon for you, dinner. So all we need, this coming the 24th, all the men that need to get checked to come out and support us. Thank you. Chief, can you say something? George just wants to be here. Okay. Thank you. I stand here as a testament to early detection. Uh, having insurance was an advantage for me, but this group with Regina, Norma, Gift of Life, gives those men that are underserved or no insurance at all a chance of surviving. So be a man and get checked. Thank you. And it wouldn't be complete if I didn't ask our president, Linda Domino, would you share just a couple of compliments with us as well? Thank you. Thank you. I would just like to offer my thanks to you for this opportunity to, for us to spread the word. And we want all the men in our community to be a man and get checked. And thank you again to you, Mayor, and to the City Council for having us here today. Thank you. Thank you. And so could we take a group photo? Can we all come up here and take a group picture? We'll be Absolutely. really fast. OK, let's be really fast and go up there and take a picture. <laughs> Fast. <laughs> go. Okay, you gotta even up. Hurry, we gotta go fast. We're taking forever. <laughs> We're good. Oh, oh, is that a part? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Just, just. I think we're good. I already got mine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have a proclamation recognizing National Women's Veterans Day. Whereas women have honorably and courageously served in all of America's wars and conflicts since the American Revolution, whereas women were officially recognized as military members or veterans on June 12, 1948, when then-President Harry Truman signed into law the Women's Armed Services Integration Act, enabling women to serve a permanent regular member of the Army, Marine Corps, Navy, and later Armed Forces. 
Whereas throughout the years, women's roles have continued to grow in all branches and phases of military operations. Whereas according to www.military.com, women now make up 15% of active duty and 18% of guard and reserve service members. Whereas on June 12th, 2023, we recognize Women's Veteran Day, which honors Americans' military women past and present. It is celebrated in recognition of the anniversary of the 1948 Women's Armed Services Integration Act, and whereas this year marks the 75th anniversary of the signing of Women's Armed Services Integration Act. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Roy West, Mayor of the City of Beaumont, do hereby proclaim Monday, June 12, 2023, as Women Veterans Day in Beaumont and encourage the City of Beaumont to recognize and honor the valor and contributions of generations of American service women and their families who have proudly served our great state and nation by safeguarding our land. Accordingly, the Mayor has hereunto set his hand and caused the seal of Beaumont to be affixed. Signed, Roy West, dated June 6, 2023. Accepting will be Cheryl Williams, retired sergeant with the United States Army. Ma'am, absolutely. Ladies, <laughs> you all come to join me? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you for your service. We'll promise you to be brief. Hot? I'm hot. I've been hot all day. <laughs> I promise you I'll be brief. I'll use my military time. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mayor West. Thank you so much. Uh, City Manager Williams, Council Members Durio, Mike Getz, Albert Turner, Pastor Felshaw, Audwin Samuel, Taylor Neal, and City Attorney Sheree Reed. Thank you for having us today. We are so delighted to be here. It was truly an honor when we all raised our right hand and swore that we would uh, defend the country of the United States, and so indeed we are blessed. It's a pleasure to stand here and represent the sa sailors, the soldiers, the airmen, and the Marines who enlisted voluntarily, who served selflessly, and who sacrificed beyond measure. I stand on the sh shoulders of the 68th, 88th Central Postal Directi Directory Battalion. I stand on the shoulders of Jeannie Tally Levette, the first female pilot. I stand on the shoulders of Billy Farrell, the first female commander of a battleship. I stand on the shoulders of Colonel Halloran, the first woman air corpsman. I stand on the, soldier, on the shoulders of sold sailors like Janetta Andrew Point, ba Bonnie Fraley, Airman Elaine goodman Leger, Soldier Sonia Lamel, Airman Sonia Lamel, Drill instructor, Sally Richardson. Soldier, Mary Williams, and I too am a soldier, Cheryl Williams. It's truly an honor to be here. We receive this proclamation as proud members of the United States military. Mothers, grandmothers, aunts, aunties, nieces, and sisters. Thank you, Mayor West and the City Council for recognizing our valiant efforts that we have served this country selflessly. May God bless you all. May God bless the United States of America. And may God protect the military. Salute. Can we get a quick picture real quick? Yeah. Hey, 
I think it's so small. Now you mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 we did so fine. Small. Yeah, she was really? Later. Yeah, you used to kiss her. Okay. <laughs> I didn't kiss her, right. Yeah. All right, one, two, three, taking Minnie, the tall, thin one, and the other one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. kiss <laughs> me. Those that are here for the proclamation and would like to leave, now is the time to do so. Thank you for coming. Uh, you spelled that. I smell perfume. Oh, I thought you were smelling something. I thought you were smelling my phone. I thought, what's wrong with my phone? <laughs> Oh, you were smelling my phone, but you were listening. I... Oh, All right, now is the time for any citizen who wishes to speak under public comments. You may make public comments on items A through F on the consent agenda, with the exception of item E, which will be pulled. And citizens will also be able to speak on agenda items 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. If you haven't already done so, please complete a green slip and hand it to the city clerk. The city clerk will call your name when it's your time to speak. We would appreciate it if you'd keep your comments to three minutes. The green light will come on when you approach the podium, and the red light will come on when your time is up. I don't have any at this time, Mayor. Okay. Is there a motion and a second for approval of the consent agenda? Move to approve the consent agenda, item e. excluding item E. Second. There is a motion and a second for the approval of consent agenda. Any discussion? All in favor of approving the consent agenda, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Next. May we have the reading of item number one, please? Yes, Mayor. Council consider a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute change order number four to the contract with King Solution Services, Inc. of Houston for the citywide pipe bursting contract phase one project. And uh, it's recommendation of approval of the resolution. Is there a motion for item number one? Second for the approval. Second. There's a, mo There's a motion and a second for appro approval of item number two. Any discussion? Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? <laughs> Question. <laughs> Councilman Turner. Bart, with it being change order number four, can you kind of tell us what's going on that is actually the, the fourth change order? Well, this last one is because uh, of supply chain issues. We can't get the fiberglass manholes, so we're having to replace them with precast concrete manholes. So we're not changing the work in any way with this change order. We're just changing materials so that we can finish out the project. That's music. All right. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in fra favor of approving item number one, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. May we have the reading about item number two? 
We're going to pull that item, Mayor, so we're going to skip to item number three. It's just my favorite number. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Next time. Okay. Item number three. Item three. Council consider a request to extend the deadline to commence construction of a mortuary to be located at 3510 Sarah Street. In the May of 2021, City Council approved ordinance number 21-032 to allow SUP for a mortuary in, in an RCR, Residential Conservation Re Revitalization District, with the following conditions. Final plans will need to meet all requirements of the City Fog Backflow Program, and two, landscaping to meet City of Beaumont ordinance requirements. Uh, Mr. Jones is requesting an additional 18 months due to a variety of unseen difficulties. Uh, the applicant states such delays are related to design planning and long structure documentation. Uh, administration staff is recommending approval of extension of the deadline for December 13th to 2024 with those conditions. Is there a motion for item number three? Move to approve with the conditions. Second. There's a motion and a second for item number three. Any discussion? All in favor of approving item number three, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. May we have the reading of item number four, please? Item four, council consider amending resolution 22-272 to cancel the purchase of 19 vehicles for the police department. Uh, the, the original resolution uh, reflected 19 units for the police department, which have a total value of 995-227. Uh, the vendor was unable to provide the vehicles, which will not be purchased from a different company. And council is requested to purchase the to cancel the purchase of this 19 unit, uh, and this approval of the resolution. Recommendation of approval. Is there a motion for item number four? Move to approve. Is there a second for the approval? Second. There's a motion and a second for approval of item number four. Any discussion? Councilman Neal. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Manager, when these were originally awarded, was there a bid bond or anything required on this originally? Is there someone here who can address that? No, there's no bid bond. My understanding is um, the only time those are required are on construction. Thank you. Councilman Turner. Todd, is the, uh, the new current price is similar to the one we were doing previously? Yes, sir. You'll see on the next agenda memo that the price difference is close to maybe $18,000 higher. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor of approving item number four, please signify by saying aye. aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion passes. May we have the reading of item number five, please? Yes. Thank you, Mayor. Council consider a resolution approving the purchase of 19 vehicles for use by the police department. This is the redirecting of, of the funds for the purchase of the uh, items that were just canceled for a price of $1,013,149. And uh, it's coming from, from the Capital Reserve Fund and recommendation of the approval of the resolution. Is there a motion for item number five? Move to approve. Second. There's a motion and a second for approval of item number five. Any discussion? All in favor of approving item number five, please signify by saying aye. Uh, Any opposed? Motion passes. May we have the reading of item number six, please? Council consider amending resolution 21-311 to cancel the purchase of one truck for Beaumont Transit. Uh, since before it was awarded a contract for the purchase of two, only one truck was uh, delivered after an 18 month delay. So we recommend uh, approval of the one truck for a vendor price of 56,792. Is there a motion for item number six? Move to approve. 
there a second for approval? Second. There's a motion and a second for approval for item number six. Any discussions? All in favor of approving item number six, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh. Any opposed? Motion passes. May we have the reading of item number seven, please? Yes, council consider a, a resolution approving the purchase of ammunition for, for the city police department from Precision Delta Corporation of Roeville, Mississippi. Uh, the attached quote in the amount of 51856 is for 10 different types of an, ammunition for the police department and staff is recommending approval of the resolution. There is a motion for item number seven. Is there a motion for item number seven? Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second for approval of item number seven. Any discussion? All in favor of approving item number seven, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. At the close of city council meeting, the council will hold an executive session to consider matters related to relating to the deliberation of economic development negotiations in accordance with section 551.087 of the government code to wit specifically project Gemstone, Castle, and Shield. Consider matters related to the deliberation of the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property in accordance with section 551.072 of the government code to wit downtown hotel. Consider matters related to be contemplated on pending litigation in accordance with section 551.071 of the government code, Caleb Finter versus city of Beaumont and Christopher S. Boone, cause number B, Two one zero two four four International Association of Firefighters Local three nine nine versus City of Beaumont Kenneth Williams in his official capacity as City Manager and Earl White in his official capacity as Fire Chief calls number D two one zero seven five zero. Now is the time for any citizen who wishes to speak. If you would like to make public comments, please complete a green slip and hand it to the city clerk. The city clerk will call your name and when, you is, when it is time for you to speak. We would appreciate it if you keep your comments to three minutes. The green light will come on when you approach the podium and the red light will come on when your time is up. Deborah Featherland, um, 6775 Lexington, Belmont, Texas. Hello, gentlemen, it's me again. I would like to extend thanks to Mr. Mike Gantz for helping us get our sewer issue fixed at East Texas and Delaware. Four months with no sewer was not fun. I thank Mr. Turner for his follow-up email, checking to make sure it was done to our satisfaction. I appreciate that. Now, I moved to Beaumont in 2017. Since then, I have had water service and garbage service with the city of Beaumont. My water bill has never gone over $80, with the exception of two times when I had a water leak. So far this year, my water bill for January, February, and March went from 7,700 gallons to 30,000 gallons. There is no way I used the water that it would take to fill a swimming pool in my little house. I live by myself, so my water usage usually runs somewhere between 15 and 2,000 gallons. I am one of them that watches my water bill every month. Um, so why am I before you? I have taken off work from my shop four times to come to the customer service here. Three of those four times, I left so angry I just shut up. The third time that I came here, I was greeted with a young lady named Shalonda that actually has a clue and cares. 
she sent someone out and they did show that there was a problem with the meter reading in the month that I used 30,000 gallons. I just got my bill again and it says I used 7,200 gallons of water. I have pictures that I will more than gladly show you that I started reading my own meter from, 421, from 429 through 529 I read the meter every day. I used 1,521 gallons of water, not 7,800. When I came back up here to discuss this next door, I was told, ma'am, it's just $30, to which I got very out of line and told the lady, then run back there and get me $30 out of your purse if it's just $30. Yeah. The water department from the top down needs to be addressed in how to speak to a citizen. When I was dealing with the sewer issue, I have never been so disrespected in my life until you two stepped in, which annoys me as a woman. I have never been spoken to with everyone in that little room over there, with the exception of Shalanda, so rudely. So why am I here before you? Because my only recourse after this, if it can't be fixed, I'm sorry, one more minute, I'll be done, is, and y'all well know, I can stir a huge mess up on social media. Because if you're overbilling me by just $30 a month, multiply that times 10,000 accounts. And I guarantee you, my mouth on social media, I guarantee you I'll stir up a hornet's nest y'all don't want to deal with. This needs to be fixed, and it needs to be fixed now. Thank you. Thank you. Jerome Alexander, um, 1118 Avalon Street, Beaumont, Texas. Good afternoon. How y'all doing, Councilman? Uh, I come here today because we got a problem. Uh, I know y'all don't have really nothing to do with the Salvation Army, but we do give funds for the Salvation Army. And we got a football field there that wasn't used for five years. So we built the organization, the football team, which y'all helped. And we was using the field last year. So Captain Jason donated the field to us and said, as long as we, long as we kept the field clean and everything, we can continue to use the field. So this year, Captain King, Captain King Bacon came. So we had a meeting, me and Coach Ben, the president, and he told us, okay, everything was fine and dandy. So when this lady come out of there, Miss, I think her name is Kira, I'm not sure, but she's a staff there. First day she goes, oh, we got, we're gonna have our own football team this year. I say, well, see, sir, there we go again. We're gonna have a problem. I so me and Coach Ben told him, say, well, we can schedule around. If you're gonna have a football team, we'll schedule around. Y'all, y'all game, so we'll be able to play. So come to find out, he kept getting us to run around, run around. Now he's telling us we can't use the field, but we because we even didn't clean it up. He said he got an email from Dallas or somewhere, and at the homeless court list, I said, well, let us see the email. So Councilor Samuel asked him to provide him with the email, which I don't know if he sent it to him yet, but after I talked to him today on the phone, he told me, well, y'all didn't clean the field up. I said, I said, that's not correct. We got pictures that we took every time we left the field, it was clean. It's not there, but the problem is, they wouldn't get no money from the concessions because the captain told them that the money from the concession would go back to the program for us to keep the, in case we need to show the pass or whatever we need for the next year. And then you also told him, Mr. West, that you would help us get the football, try to help us get the football scoreboard fixed. And now we don't have a field, so we don't have nowhere, we don't got nowhere to pay nobody no money to play on the field. But what the field just gonna stay there? We took our money, we went and painted the field, not with all the kids, not the kids are upset because we don't, they try to take the field from for something that they say we done is incorrect because we got photos and evidence to show that. And they get money, they don't have a football team or a boys and girls team, no way, and they get money anyway for to have one, and they don't have one. So when we come in and try to get people out the streets to come and bring the kids in, get them from the television to play sports, and then we just put a CF, CFYL team, CYF lead together with a bunch of other guys in Beaumont so we can get all the, get all the kids in Beaumont to play for each team. And that's what we have done. Now we don't got a field to play in. So this is the situation we're in. Why is that? They ain't using it. So I'm just asking somebody, please talk to the guy and give us some help, bro, because we need the help. 
And we want to help the community, help the kids stay and do sports and do the things we say we want to do. And somebody got to help me. I thank you. Thank you, Drew. Addie Allen, 9695 Gross, Boma, Texas. Good afternoon. Congratulations, Mayor West, to the council members and all of you that help run the city. I'm standing before you with just a couple of comments, and I know that Councilman Turner had asked, if you stand here, uh, please get answers to whatever the concerns of the citizens are. So today my concern is, like Councilman Turner said, I noticed that there are quite a few change orders on different projects. If the city's stance is to go on the lower bid, why are there allowances for so many change orders? I don't understand that. And maybe I can get an answer. Uh, the proclamation for the hurricane season was given. But I was told that there would be a review on the evacuation plan to date. I haven't heard it, but I saw a proclamation given uh, to the department. And I also heard a, a presentation. However, it was skewed because when the presentation was given, the staff member gave his opinion. When he showed stuff up on the screen, it was done in the city uh, opinion. Nothing was referenced to whom had been spoken to about the evacuation plan. Now we're at hurricane season. The weather changes. There's been hurricanes here in Beaumont that's come through, not too far from where I stay, out on 90 in Nome. So what's more important when you talk about it? You talk about how much it costs, but lives can be lost. So are we going to look at the human factor? Are we going to look at the money factor? So we just, you know, wherever your priorities are. But I'd like to have an answer to that. Um, this year, the citizens had to get a raise. $8 on the water bill, $12 on the electric bill equates to $24. So I always stand up here and say, what are the citizens getting? You know, I know economic development is important, but also doing something for the citizens that pay taxes is important. So, you know, when is these things going to happen for us? In the Water Department, it took a year for me to get a citizen, a citizen, citizen discount. I have gray hair, proud of it, and if there's a discount due, I want it. But Mr. Seminole did get that taken care of, but it took a year. I, like the other lady, went three or four times to the water department. I won't tell you what kind of excuses I got. Thank you very much. Thank you for your service. Thank you. That's all I have, Mayor. Okay, now it's time for council member comments. Councilman Durio. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, one comment. Uh, this past weekend, there was a... Um, Function out at Sprout Park, and I got a couple of calls, and it was trash, that trash everywhere. But by the time I was able to ride out there and look at it, the Parks Department had already cleaned it up. Uh, I didn't really realize that they have a, a on-call people all weekend just for that. And uh, it, looked, it looked like nothing had ever occurred. It was really nice. And I just want to thank the Park Department uh, for doing that. It was really appreciated. And... Uh, had a great time at the Westbrook class of 83 reunion. That was the first class to graduate from Westbrook. And congratulations on your 40 year reunion. That's it. Councilman Geltz. I also want to thank Kenneth Regatt and the Parks Department. There was a, a playground uh, piece of equipment at Rogers Park, a slide that had split. Uh, I guess the sun and the heat finally got to it, and they had to remove it. Uh, the barricade that was originally put up wasn't uh, really very substantial uh, where you would come off the playground equipment and where the slide used to be. Uh, a citizen complained about it within 24 hours. 
they were back out there with uh, Mr. Regett personally on a weekend to uh, secure that. So uh, that's the kind of responsiveness that we're proud of and the kind of effort that our city employees do give. Also want to remind citizens that our movies are still going on at the Jefferson Theater uh, this Friday night as The Lion King. Uh, it's a great, car, uh, great movie, a great Disney musical. Uh, so try to get your kids, grandkids out there to see it. If you haven't seen it on a wall on the big screen, it's worth going to. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councilman Turner. Yes, again, I'd like to uh, congratulate Kelly High School on their state championship. I'd like to say thank you to Mike for stepping up, making sure, you know, those kids are celebrated. You know, I appreciate it. I think it's important we celebrate our wins. Uh, one thing that's important, Mr. Jerome, we actually talked about youth football programs today, and that's something the mayor is kind of currently working with the school district where we can see if we could provide facilities to actually let organizations already existing have a place they can practice and play and call home. So that's something we discussed earlier this morning, and I'm glad you came up here and discussed it because that is a big concern of ours, okay? Uh, secondly, uh, Ms. Addy, whatever questions it is, uh, responses is, I know we did have the evacuation discussion and uh, sirens. I think it would be important us to get the sources of what information came to her. And lastly, I want to make sure on June 17th, the entire community is invited to celebrate Juneteenth. We will have Royal Renown Lenny Williams. You know the old school song, I Love You. He'll be performing live, and Shirley Murdoch, she'll be performing live as well. I think it's important that, you know, from a heritage perspective, you know, what was went through and where we're at now, we really get out and celebrate Juneteenth. You know, like, that's one of my favorite holidays. So I think it's extremely important that the whole community feels welcome and invited to come out and celebrate Juneteenth with the city of Beaumont. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Felshaw. Thank you, Mayor. Just as uh, Councilman Turner said, congratulations to Kelly High School baseball team. And that's it. Councilman Samuel, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Alexander, uh, it was discussed in our workshop earlier this morning about recreation and what uh, some of the requests that was made by Councilmember Turner, as well as this council. We're looking at uh, entering collaborations with other entities. So uh, I'm happy that you're pushing and keep pushing, and we will address that. And uh, thank you, uh, manager. Uh, for what you've been doing. Uh, and I know last night you responded to me kind of late about a citizen uh, application for a variance. I noticed that they are here. So after the meeting, I'm going to ask that they uh, just have, take the minute to visit. So thank you. Uh, and uh, I think we are moving in an excellent direction. Uh, we pretty much came to a consensus of those things that we feel uh, we need to address in the city. So, Mayor, thank you for your leadership, and uh, I'm happy to see where we're going now. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Neal. Thank you, Mayor. Just want to say thank you, uh, Mr. Manager, and the, your staff for uh, everything they did today. It was very informative, and uh, I think everybody up here learned something, and um, getting excited to see how this budget wraps up this year. Mayor, forgot one thing. Yes, sir. I just want to, especially in fact, a view of the fact of how many veterans are here today, for everybody to take a moment to remember what was going on 89 years ago today on the beaches of Normandy as uh, American soldiers and Marines uh, stormed the beaches to, um, you know, get in there and beat Nazi Germany. And uh, so many young Americans' lives were lost that day. If you've never seen the movie Saving Private Ryan, uh, the first 15, 20 minutes of that movie is about the most gripping, compelling story of what happened, happened that day that I've ever seen. So uh, for all of you, thank you for your service. City Attorney. Yes, just briefly to answer um, Ms. Allen's question as it relates to change orders and just for the education of the public, there are several reasons why um, we process change orders. Um, most commonly, it's because uh, 
in construction, when you bid on a project, you really don't know what you're getting into until the work is started. Um, sometimes we process change orders because there's more work that needs to be done in order to complete that work that was unanticipated. Sometimes we process change orders because at the time the work was started, the price for materials has increased and that is passed on, obviously, to the city. Sometimes they purchase too much material and that material is unused. And so they built the city for it. And so then they basically reduce the price um, of their bid based on that unused material. So there are several reasons for a change order. Um, not always do they um, do an increase. For today's change order, the price that we were originally quoted for was for fiberglass manholes that cost one price. And we had to go with what was available, which is obviously a, a different price. And so there are multiple reasons for that. And it's not always you know explained during discussion, but it is in the memo that's posted um, for uh, the public to view. Thank you. Our public works director, assistant city manager Boone. I yeah, just wanted to congratulate the communications department staff on their, their awards at the uh, press club event recently. No comment. I think they forced me to add plan not. Uh, but I would like to thank council for your work today and this, all these work sessions. I know your time's very valuable and being able to come here and participate, we really appreciate it. And thank Todd and his staff and all the staff for their hard work. Just a follow up, we our policy now is everyone who speaks from the podium with an issue, we follow up with them. So no, whoever it is, we follow them up. So if no, no one's followed up with Ms. Allen, we will check with her again to make sure. But now as standard policy, everyone who speaks with an issue, we follow up with them. Thank you. Thank you, City Manager. And also thank you to the staff and the council. We've been meeting since nine this morning. And uh, so it's been a, been a full day. And we do have at the event center tonight at 530, uh, the Kelly High School uh, bas uh, baseball team that won state championship is being honored. And, but at this point, uh, we're going to now recess to, into executive session.